Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thorne. and in today's video the issue is how are you intelligent? What is your dominant intelligence? What ability is your strongest? And let me start off this video by asking you what is your core biggest weakness? What things do you tend to struggle the most with? And what things do you think you are the best at? Perhaps this video will give you some answers. And with time I've mapped out 16 core different intelligences, each related to two letters in your four personality letter code. Organizing the first two letters, or the last two letters, or the first and the third letter, or the second and the fourth letter, you can find out which intelligences, which abilities you have developed beyond other personality types. And in reality, the intelligences are based on not something innate, not an innate ability, but something you can develop. You have four cognitive functions that are basically native to how you reach flow, how you reach a positive mental state, how you reach and gain energy, how you gain motivation, how you release anxiety, and how you deal with and manage stress. But the intelligences are about how good you are at something, how developed your abilities are in each individual cognitive function. How well have you learned to use a cognitive function in reality? And the amazing thing about the cognitive functions is that they translate so well into intelligences, they translate so well into basic abilities, core things we all need to do throughout the, our life. Core things to understand our environment, to make decisions, to be a smart person. And this video will address the first eight intelligences the, uh, based on your either your first two letters or your last two letters. So the eight first intelligences are related to first, theoretical awareness. Then secondly, awareness of patterns and navigation. And third, Awareness of the room or of nature. And fourth, awareness of history and the past. Five, awareness of people's hidden motives and possible interpretations. Six, awareness of logic and how to solve a problem in an efficient way. Seven, awareness of mathematics and how things are operating and performing. And finally, eight, communication, how we impact other people through our words and our actions. And the intelligences are, in order, the IN intelligence, theoretical intelligence, the EN intelligence, patterns intelligence, the ES intelligence, nature intelligence, the IS intelligence, historical intelligence. The feeling perceiving intelligence called interpretations intelligence, the thinking perceiving intelligence called logical intelligence, the thinking judging intelligence called mathematical intelligence, and finally the feeling judging intelligence called communications intelligence. Now imagine this, you're placed in front of three doors and you have to judge or predict what is behind these three doors. How good are you at dealing with subjects that you can't study, see, or observe with your hands? How good are you at forming theories about information that you have yet to be able to observe in reality? How good are you at dealing with hypothetical options and theoretical alternatives, different models of theories? How good are you at grasping theoretical concepts and using them to understand reality? Types with high theoretical intelligence can predict how reality works and functions and what its nature is without having to investigate or search reality for information about it. Theoretical intelligence is ever so often about why things are the way they are. Why are things at the place they are? How are things progressing? What is going to happen in the future? If I let things be right now, how do I see things changing? What, how do I see things progressing from now? Now, how are you with dealing with patterns? Imagine that multiple events are happening before you and you have to understand how these events are related. Imagine that you have to get from point A to point B. How will you get there? Patterns intelligence could equally, equally be called navigations intelligence because it's so much about orienting ourselves in our environment, figuring out how to get from one point to another. 
Intuitive extroverts are usually well adept at figuring out connections, finding out patterns, seeing different uh, emerging alternatives, see, predicting how an event will transpire, being able to guess what's going to happen next, making basically a roadmap from point A to point B to point C to point D to point E and so on and so on. And if the intuitive extrovert's ability is patterns and navigation, the sensing extrovert's ability is a little different. It's about the room. It's about reading the room, reading your environment, reading nature. What are the different things around me? Who are the different people? What do they look like? Where are they? How far away from me are they? Sensing extroversion relies on finding information about the room. And that paints the picture of two different types, the intuitive extroverts that are great at navigating the room, getting from one point to another, but sometimes falling on things that they missed was in the room. And then you have the sensing extroverts that are great for spotting what's in the room, and when getting from point A to point B, easily getting lost, easily getting confused, easily missing basic things about where things were or how to get from one point to another. And finally, you have the sensing introverted type. And the sensing introvert is marked, of course, by an awareness of past information and past data. The sensing introvert has the most accurate memory recall of all personality types. And the more developed the ability, the better the sensing introvert will be at using this function. If they put something somewhere, they will expect it to still be there at the end of the day. If something has moved or switched places, they will get lost. They want to have an accurate understanding of how the environment is structured and shaped. They want to have an accurate recall of how things went down in the past. They want to understand how things used to be. The sensing introvert is great for categorizing information and deciding what category each piece of information around them belongs to. So that creates four different ways of thinking. The sensing introvert knows the definition and the categories that everything in the room belongs to, but they might not know exactly where everything is. The intuitive introvert may struggle to recall information accurately or categorizing things properly. But, and this is important, the intuitive introvert knows why things are the way they are, what the deeper reasons behind everything around them is, why everything exists, why we're here. Now, moving on to the last two letters. Feeling perceiving, thinking perceiving, feeling judging and thinking judging. These relate strongly to the Maud and Myers-Briggs cognitive function variations, introverted feeling, introverted thinking, extroverted thinking and extroverted feeling. And these have much more to do with what we do and why we do things and how we do things than what information grounds our decisions and what perception we use to make our decisions. And with interpretative intelligence, you analyze if whether someone said something that was true or not, if someone, what intentions could lie behind what someone did or why they did something the way they did. And that is why so often feeling and perceiving is about reading people, reading animals, finding out what people are struggling with, finding out what peop how people are doing, finding out the reasons behind every person's action. Is a person evil or are they hurt or are they struggling with something? What are the reasons behind why people do the things they do? The feeling perceiving type is constantly reading what are the deeper hidden intentions behind everything that is happening around us. And feeling and perceiving as an interpretative intelligence is all about finding out then reading the information you receive and deciding what possible motivations, intentions and hidden interpretations exist behind everything that happens? What is the purpose behind everything that happens? Feeling and judging is about how we impact other people, how we affect them through our actions, how our actions can shape and change how other people are feeling. And that is why it's a communications intelligence. This is why so many INFJs are drawn towards being public speakers or towards being writers. But beyond that, it's also a good function, a good intelligence for managing people, managing groups, making sure that everyone in the group is at their best, helping people achieve their fullest potential. Building a cause, building people, rallying people towards a cause. It is to some extent a shepherding function. 
Thinking and judging is about scoring, ranking, organizing, and seeing how things fit in relation to each other. Which uh, piece of information is superior to the other based on its mechanic properties? Thinking and judging is in its nature mathematical intelligence. Thinking and judging is great for telling people what exactly they did wrong when they were playing an instrument, what note they got wrong, what key they missed, what sting step they did and had had most issues with. Thinking and judging is great for finding out what exactly a person did wrong when trying to achieve a certain goal. What step did they miss? What things did they forget? What notes in the instrument did they forgot to play? And counting all of this, they can get an average grasp of how good something is. And thinking perceiving is a logical intelligence. Thinking and perceiving a person... A person gifted with logical intelligence is well able to analyze obstacles, analyze questions, and to determine which different possible answers might fit best in there. Imagine you'd have to cross a road and you had to come up with options, different ways to cross the road. The thinking perceiving type is the person that can think of the most options. Now imagine you had to cross a river to get to the other side. How would you get to the other side? The thinking perceiving type, the person with the highest logical intelligence, would be the best at figuring out different ways to use the information you know you have to get over the river. If you know what rules are in place in a situation, and if you know what goals are available, and how what different steps people could take, then which step appears to be the most efficient? And so this creates four different ways of analyzing actions around us. And once again, this creates four different perspectives. The perspectives of the people with the highest authentication, interpretation intelligence. The people that see the world ruled by different intentions and personal motives. Versus the people that see the world operating through hidden mechanical laws. The feeling perceiving type will be able to know exactly why a person did something the way they did it. The thinking perceiving person will know the different ways a person could have done it. The feeling judging type will know the best way to say something to have the best positive impact on another person. The thinking judging person will know which statement is the most valid logically speaking. And I believe that skill is the most important forgotten dimension of understanding the cognitive functions. While we have certain cognitive functions that we enjoy using and certain functions that we can use, how good are we at using them? Are there INFJs that have come to develop higher theoretical intelligence compared to other INFJs? And do, does age, for example, matter here? Or something else? Often one of the more fascinating things I can find is that often INFJs are really good at reading the room, scanning their environment and understanding their nature, but they are not as good at categorizing what they see and understanding what it is that they are seeing. And the ENFP might be good at navigation and getting from point A to point B to point C, but they often are clueless about what's happening in the environment around them, so often that they can get startled by seeing them something that they didn't expect to be there. If things aren't in the place the ENTP expected it to be, they can get so easily disoriented. And while the INFJ or INTJ might be able to answer what came first, the chicken or the egg, they might not know what a chicken or an egg is. They might forget. And they definitely won't remember to pick up the eggs from the store. And perhaps the most essential thing about the intelligences are that they show us that we are all a little stupid at something. So my question to you is, what is your biggest stupidity? What is your most stupid thing you've ever done? What are some basic things that you seem to struggle with that everyone else seems to do so easily? And yeah, what are the things that you are better at than other people? What are the things you can do easily that other people keep on missing? The eight intelligences are a step towards what Albert Einstein discussed when he said, if you judge a horse by its ability to climb a tree, you will live uh, your entire life thinking the horse is stupid. And yes, that is a paraphrasing quote. That's not what he exactly said. Still, it gets down to the essence of, essence of things. And it gets down to what I'm trying to do with the eight intelligences and how I hope that they can improve typology. 
So if you think this is interesting, feel free to forward this to your friends to show them that, well, hey, look at this, guys. I'm actually more smarter than you think. Or was it more intelligenter? See, never trust an INFJ to remember things accurately. So just have a nice day and make sure to tune in again the next day for my next video.